questions from some of the judges. So whilst uh, Dean Timothy would have asked you a really qu a difficult question, or I asked you a, qu a difficult question, you were still very calm and unable to, to answer it. You were still anxious whenever you looked at the time. Um, and although you were anxious about it, it threw you off as opposed to make you restructure your argument in a quicker way. So that's, that would be one negative thing I would point out. The other thing was, uh, I personally wouldn't dare, and I come from a, I come from a jurisdiction where you, the judge is, uh, judge is the only person that speaks in the name of the king, and I think it's pretty much the same thing in most of places in the world, but uh, I wouldn't dare to say to a judge, uh, that was an excellent question. I don't think the judge is waiting for, for the counsel to tell him if he liked his question or not. So that, I would avoid that, and I would avoid a lot of, you know, of um, I, I would avoid, and of, I think a lot of people in this room have heard my story of, of my first day on court when I was sent back home for, for simply having gel in my hair. So, so I personally, I'm too scared of a judge to tell him that he asked me, that he asked a good question. But all in all, your, your presentation skills were, were really good and you had, you had good responses and that's very important in mooting. Respondents, Mr. Singh, I think I'm going to be more harsher on the respondents because I've seen them before, I've judged them before, and uh, so I actually have seen some development there. Um, Mr. Singh, I think you were very well spoken. Uh, you were very professional and had good hand gestures, as opposed to, to your colleague there that you can learn from. Your eye, uh, your eye contact wasn't that great. You concentrated on your area of comfort. So you found it comfortable to look at John and myself and stayed there. <laughs> you need to move your eyes around, I think. There's, there's many more people here, a lot more important people than myself and John, trust me. Um, Drawing, us, uh, drawing our attention to the memo and the fact sheet was very useful. Again, it's, it's a good skill because it buys you some time and it makes sure that we're on the same uh, wavelength. Uh, when you're using authorities, I would say you need to be very careful to know the authority in and out because sometimes you will have a judge who actually, uh, who's judging you on the moot who actually judged the case itself or was a representative of the case. And I think you've had that experience with, uh, with uh, uh, some of the QCs yesterday. So just in case, when you use an authority, make sure that, the, that, the that you know it more than anything in the world. Otherwise, don't use it. Um, but it was good that you were cautious as well of being repetitive. You, you pointed it out because at some point one of us would have pointed it out. Uh, don't use statements like uh, this cannot be doubted or no one can doubt this because general statements like those, you will be grilled for them. So just generally speaking. Uh, respondent number two, Roy, I think you were, you were a good presenter, you were well spoken and clear. You acted uh, nervous when you're thrown off by a hard question. Um, a good, there's a saying that a lot of, I, I think the judges will not like, well, I personally coming from an in-house uh, environment could get away saying that, that a good lawyer uh, worries a lot about the fact, but the, the great lawyer worries about how they present them. And I think in your case, you, you knew the facts very well, you knew your argument, you had, your structure was amazing, but the way you presented it was missing at certain points because you were thrown off by the question. You looked nervous for three seconds, then you would answer it. So that nervous look, you should lose it somehow. Um, when you ask your question, uh, you need to understand that sometimes when we ask you a question, we're actually on your side. So my question was actually leading you towards a fact that I needed you to present. So, uh, so don't assume I know in, in the Indian moots, a lot of times you, you get grilled by the judges, but sometimes the judges actually, is actually helping you because they want you, one, to present the, the point that you want to leave the rest of the judges with, but two, you want to, maybe they want you to move on. We understand that fact and we need you to move on. Uh, but generally you did good research and, uh, and you were good in sending us back to read uh, very similar to your colleague in sending us back to read the memo. But all in all, I really enjoyed this final. This is my third final, and to be honest, it was the best one I've had so far. So, so you've done very well. You should be very proud of yourselves, all of you. Uh, this is, <clears throat> I think, the third year in which uh, uh, I've uh, um, come to judge the final, and uh, uh, I've done so because it gives me great pleasure, and this year it did uh, too. Uh, all of you were fluent, uh, all of you were confident, and no doubt that's why you've reached the final. Uh, but uh, all of you have got a lot to learn. Uh, 
Advocacy is about persuading the court, and that requires uh, good eye contact with the judges, and when you've got a big court like this, that's difficult, but you, you need to keep your eye on your judges to see how they're reacting. You mustn't be too assertive, because uh, that is off-putting for a judge, uh, just as excessive um, deference is um, off-putting. That's something you have to gauge. Um, but none of you had too much trouble with that. The uh, points where I'd say that um, uh, all of you um, uh, could be criticized, um, not conceding the weak points. If you want to persuade a judge that you're worth listening to, it's a very good idea uh, that the judge should recognize that you recognize the weakest points. And um, legitimate aim was not a strong point for the uh, applicants in this case. And margin of appreciation was not a strong point for the respondents in this case. Uh, you need also to focus um, on your best points. Uh, obviously, for an advocate, uh, it's easy to say that, uh, but the best point is the best points that the judge think of the best points, so it's not very easy for the advocates to know uh, which are the best points, but you've got to take a chance on it. Uh, the facts are all uh, litigation really is about facts, not about um, principles. Principles come in because they're attached to facts. And uh, uh, all of you uh, could have focused much more on the facts of this case. There were quite a lot of facts in the uh, uh, sheets that we were given uh, to which nobody referred at all. So uh, I would... Um, I would urge you to concentrate on the facts. You were all good with questions in the sense that none of you were put off. Uh, a lot of uh, inexperienced advocates when faced with a question uh, simply don't know what to say at all because they're too nervous or they're um, not agile enough in their thinking. Uh, and none, of, none of you fell uh, down in that way. But uh, when you are asked a question, uh, the judge usually wants a short and precise answer uh, and not uh, a lengthy one. Uh, and uh, although you were all very good at picking up on questions, you were all a little bit um, too lengthy in your uh, answers. Um, but you were all very good. You've given us a very hard task. And the last thing that I would want any of you to go away from this room uh, feeling is that uh, we didn't think that it wasn't a very close uh, run thing uh, for uh, both the results that we're going to announce. It was a very close run uh, indeed for both of them. And now the uh, first, um, the first announcement is uh, of the uh, best uh, oralist uh, for the final, and uh, uh, we have uh, decided to announce that the winner of that is uh, Mr. Silas Morrison. team is the Nelson University of Law from the Hydro Bank. Thank you very much.